I told you content was never going to be a problem, didn't I? Oh yeah, Rob here from Dot Wob. Uh, this episode we're going to show you the ins and outs of the Ricky Carmichael KX250 SR 2001 that we managed to get our hands on. Uh, we're going to use this for inspiration for the Mike Brown and the Tommy Searle builds just to make sure we build them the very best thing we can. So strap yourself in. So this 2001 KX250 SR was built by Factory Kawasaki Racing at the end of 01. Um, I spoke to Norm Bigelow at Pro Circuit who used to be the parts guy at, Pro, at Kawasaki and he told me what they did is they built six bikes uh, and registered them, registered those in Ricky Carmichael's name, six 125s registered them in James Stewart's name and six 250s and registered those in Jeff Emig's name. So the bikes got a title in Ricky Carmichael's name uh, factory frame which is basically a production frame modified because the AMA production rule. Um, I'm not quite sure what spec it was in when it left the factory but had a few nice bits and pieces on it um, and then the bike went missing in California for many years. A um, couple of years ago it surfaced on Craigslist in California and David Villeman the former factory Yamaha rider bought it, managed to find some of the missing parts to build it up. He then sold it to an Australian collector who found a few more of the missing factory parts who then sold it to an English collector who finished it off to what you see today. So it is a parts bin bike. It is the real thing. But anybody who knows anything about factory bikes knows that they're all built out of parts anyway. So it's the real deal. It's got the proper forks in it. It's got the nitrogen uh, sub tank forks, it's got the two piece adjuster, mag cases, mag wheels. It's, got, it's the real thing. It's, full of, it's fully loaded. So it's gonna, we've got the verniers out when we're copying it. So the forks are probably the most special part on the bike was suspension. Uh, they would have been 60,000 US dollars new, believe it or not, it's ridiculous money. Um, but these are nitrogen sub tanks. You can see the tubes coming out of the top of the forks at 45 degree angle and then it gets hidden. Uh, the bar pad gets cut and the, the tanks are hidden on the, on the bars underneath the bar pad. I'm sure it's not very nice to hit your chest on it, but there you go. So they are really, really special. They only used them for a little amount of time just because they were so expensive. Um, but they're the proper thing. Very, very trick. And we are not going to be copying these for the Tommy Searle bike, but we've got something similar. So we are, we're working on it. So the hubs, factory Kawasaki, um, laced the DID factory rims. Now these rims did come production, or a version of these rims did come production for Kawasaki for a couple of years, but they did crack. Uh, the factory ones didn't crack, and they're a lot stronger. So it's a nice round shape, stops any mud buildup, stops any wheel unbalance. Um, massive disc, floating, um, with a magnesium caliper. So with everything, um, it's the suspension that's really advanced on these bikes. You have to bear in mind this bike's 22 years old, so it's no youth. The shock, separate compression, high and low speed adjustment. So cool, so cool. It's really neat. Big thick shaft, oversized, oversized bladder, um, cast body. It's the full deal. Uh, I dread to think how much money it would have cost new. And now just that shock alone would probably be worth three grand. So the big question is, people often wonder what these things are worth. And there's such a massive disparity between parts bin bikes like this one or real race ridden championship winning bikes which are out there. Um, this one's available at £22,000 right now. It's probably worth more than that in bits if I'm deadly honest. Um, if it was like a real championship winning bike, five times that, six times that, 150, 180 grand wouldn't be out of order for it. But as it stands, uh, the collector wants 22, which I think is quite cheap. Too much for me, but maybe there's somebody. So that's enough about this one. Um, let's get on and see what we've been up to this week at Dot Wob.
So this 96 RM250, we're building for an American called Leon Caps. Uh, Leon is Ryan Villapoto's man friend. In fact, he was friends with Ryan's dad, who was super cool. So anyway, if it wasn't for Leon, Ryan wouldn't come. So we have to build a bike for, for Leon to race VMX DN. So I had a 96 RM250, which was basically the frame in the engine. So we managed to find the rest of it, uh, build it up to a, a pretty good standard for him to race. Uh, this is going to have American factory team uh, 1996 graphics on when the team was Larocco and Albertine. Um, so we've polished the hubs, Cerakoted the rear hub, polished it. Nice gold XL rims. It'll have a pro circuit pipe and silencer on, billet top clamp so we can run the uh, eight bolt bar mount for the pro taper bars. It's quite special. I'll show you it next on the next episode when it's uh, finished. So next episode on Dot Wob TV, uh, we're going to be showing you the uh, 94 RC 250 factory Honda that I finally got put together. So it's looking mint. So uh, like and subscribe. Let's crack on. <laughs>